Yo, hello, hello, welcome to the elephant in the room. My name is Aaron and this video will be the third part of the chapter 5 of the book The Origin of Most Problems. So, let's first remember what we talked about in the last video. I mean, there are people who think that we need rules and laws in order to stop bad human behavior. But then we met the bad students, the bad students of our world. We met the mafia, the smuggler, the terrorist, the hacker and the cheater. And together they form the so-called bad tribe, um, consisting of 120 million members or even more than that. And um, they just prove that Things like rules and laws don't work because these people, they don't give a shit about them. Like rules and laws are usually for good people, they take them seriously, but no mafia, no terrorist, no hacker really respects rules and laws, so these things don't work. So then in order to stop bad human behavior, we should not focus on um, the bad human behavior itself but instead what creates that bad human behavior and that's what we argue throughout that book our trade-based society so then we thought about okay we need to burst the trade bubble but how can we do that and the trump superhero is now going to explain that um, with a story which is about focusing on a problem with force solutions so the Trump superhero explains throughout the human existence or history there was a kind of a mystery like we can call it a monster ghost that killed like not only thousands or millions but even billions of human beings that have existed on this planet earth. He is saying 2000 years ago this monster ghost eradicated some 30% of Europe's, Western Asia's and Northern Africa's population. 1500 years ago it killed 40% of Europe, Egypt and West Asia. And 700 years ago it killed almost half of the population of Europe, Asia and North Africa. Then 400 to 500 years ago it almost eradicated the Mexican population killing 80% of them and a few years later it came back to Mexico killing another 50% of the remaining humans. 300 years ago in Persia it killed 2 million people in one single year. 150 years ago it claimed 1 million deaths in Russia and 100 years ago 75 million lives worldwide in just two years. But then in the past years these deaths created by that monster ghost have declined dramatically in proportion to the population. So there were only one to two percent of deaths worldwide um, due to that monster ghost 60 years ago only 0.03% 50 years ago and only 0.0002% of the world's population some 10 years ago. So this monster ghost killed almost the entire human population in the past 2000 years yet it almost made no dent in the past 100 years ago. So why and who in the world is this monster ghost? Do you have a clue? Well, humans theorized about this monster ghost already 2500 years ago where they thought of it um, like some seeds, kind of, which are in the air and those seeds get inhaled by people and they make people sick. They also thought that these seeds lurk inside some people and they can activate again after a while. And um, yeah, so in time they still didn't have a clue, they learned more about it, like they understood that certain places are more prone to infect you with these seeds and that these seeds can transfer from one person to another. Some concluded even that these seeds are self-generated as though they sparked out of rotten meat but not much was done to avoid its deadly powers because of course they didn't know exactly. So they could not fight it or run away from it. Then there was a guy who changed the history of humanity forever. <laughs> 
kind of because he did an experiment so what he did was he took three jars all with a slice of meat inside and also with an egg inside and then um, the difference between those three jars was that one had a lid the other one had just a cloth on top and the third one had no lid so what happened after a couple days was that the one with no lid had like maggots inside the one with the cloth on top had maggots only on the cloth and the one with the closed lid had no maggots so aha the guy realized the monster ghost is not self-generated it comes from somewhere and it gets attracted to the rotten food it was the first time they proved that this monster ghost is more than just a theory it is real but still who is it and then you know people invented um, the microscope they came up with a microscope and they were finally able to see and touch basically see the monster ghost and they saw these little tiny germs these microorganisms bacteria, and viruses and um, came up with the germ theory of disease like finally they figured out that it were um, those little bacteria and viruses that created these infectious diseases and they realized that if you boil water and thus kill them you almost eradicate certain infections and if you wash your hands with some special substances like soap before surgery or delivering babies you drop mortality from infectious diseases by a staggering amount thus the germ theory of disease and they finally um, understood the problem and this is also the first thing that the Trump superhero wants us to understand that there is no solution without a problem of course like if you don't know what you're fighting against then you cannot fight it properly right and um, yeah, thousands of years dealing with this problem pushed humanity to finally find a solution or multiple solutions and the explosion of real solutions only came about 100 years ago when people better understood the monster ghost. If they had no clue that there are tiny organisms that spread and create diseases and later deaths, they could not apply any highly impactful solution. So now we find solutions like boiling water or cooking food before drinking or eating just as a no-brainer is just a normal thing today yet if you would not know about the fact that these tiny organisms are alive and can be killed at high temperatures then you could not come up with this simple solution what they also realized is that these tiny organisms are so diverse like there are so many different kinds of them and what works to defeat some doesn't work to defeat others so the second point the Trump superhero wants us to understand is that problems are not solved with um, not a solution but multiple solutions like in the case of these tiny microorganisms we can come up with a solution like washing our hands or boiling water or using disinfectant um, spray or also come up with vaccines so you see there's one problem but multiple solutions and the third most important thing to understand is that problems are usually never solved but only remediated like even today after such a detailed understanding of the monster ghost we still see people dying because of it and that's usually because we can never fully solve a problem it is a continuous battle like for example if there's a virus and it mutates then we need to come up with another solution for that mutation right we need to um, develop another vaccine for that mutation of the virus so yeah it's a constant battle and here the Trump superhero is now explaining that um, something very big is happening today with aging as more and more people researchers scientists are working on like acknowledging the problem they understand that um, diseases like cancer cardiovascular disease um, alzheimer and so forth are a symptom of aging and they are um, like tackling now aging itself so what creates those diseases and um, 
Yeah, as soon as they can properly identify this monster ghost, they will be able to invent solutions to destroy it. Not for good, but to tame it in a way so that it can be called eradicated. That's what's happening with aging these days. And maybe the solutions will then be so, ah, so easy, simple and a no-brainer. But since we don't know it, it is unimaginable to us. Remember that it took humans hundreds of years of scientific research and theories to be able to finally agree and accept that tiny organisms are the cause of infectious diseases. Then, after many years of trying solutions, humans are still coming up with new solutions today for this problem. Like an example would be the worldwide um, coronavirus pandemic, where researchers are working on um, developing a vaccine for the coronavirus. The aging research is only decades old, so it's a pretty young um, researching field and it is already exciting. The most exciting aspect is to understand the problem because you know that this will force people to invent solutions. Cancer will be cured, cardiovascular disease will be cured, Alzheimer will be cured, aging itself will be cured. Entirely? Probably not. When? We don't know. How? We don't know. But very likely there will be multiple and evolving solutions and a continuous fight and we will never reach a perfect cure for any of them. But if only 5% of the population will die in the future from such diseases that are ravaging the population today, then that's a success story. That's how the world works, not in absolutes, but in percentages. Here another example is the transportation thing, like the problem of you want to get from point A to point B. And throughout the human history there have been many different ways of doing that, many different solutions. Like you could walk, take the bike, take the horse or take the car, the train or now we have helicopters and airplanes. So you see there's one problem but multiple solutions. And open source is nothing more than a solution for the proprietary software problem. That's why this movement sparked into existence and that's why it is still alive today. When proprietary software would cease to be a problem, then the open source movement will cease to exist and software will be called whatever it will be called. If we had no such concept of proprietary software, and somehow all the software in the world would have been open for all to see and edit and share, then no open source movement would have been ever invented. And our need or want to explore space will push us to invent better spacecrafts, better telescopes, better communicational technologies and better science. The fact that we cannot see the far away objects in outer space too sharply is a problem that will push for solutions. We first made bigger telescopes on Earth, then improved the technique of capturing light and then sent a telescope into space so that our atmosphere here on the Earth won't interfere with the image quality. Like um, the Hubble telescope for example is one of those telescopes who are um, in outer space. And again another endless set of solutions for one or more problems. So yeah, I think we get the point. There are no solutions unless there is a problem. And a problem is a problem until it is fixed, but it is never fully fixed, at least in most cases, only remediated. And the Trump superhero now transfers this way of thinking to our problem, which is trade. So trade must be our enemy and we must fight to push this force away from human societies in order to immensely improve our way of living. Be careful, if the problem is ill-defined, then the solutions to it will also be lacking. The war on terror recognized terrorism as the problem, yet it could not find a solution for it because the problem was ill-defined and it was in fact a symptom of another problem, therefore they could never find a solution for it. Hence, the reason why this journey we started was so long was because the Trump superhero had to define the problem in a robust manner, else the solutions would have been inefficient and vastly pointless. And now we have a very solid understanding of our problem, trade, trade-off and the need for trade. 
So now there are different people coming in and they think like or they question what exactly is a trade? Like what if I fix computers and that makes me feel good? Is that a trade? The other one is asking is it a trade if you have a pair of shoes that fit me better and I have one that fit you better and we exchange them? Is that a trade? <laughs> and the dog is asking what if someone gives me a gift and I feel like I should give a gift back? Is that a trade? And the Trump superhero says, hold on creatures, a trade is simple to understand with the following. You do something only if you get something else in return from the other part. It is a transaction between two parties. If you repair computers but ask the other humans to say thank you else you won't repair them, then yes, that's a trade. But if you don't ask them for anything and you just feel good doing it, then that's not a trade. At least not what the Trump superhero is talking about. Because you see, when you put the microscope on any idea, it becomes bizarre. Much in the same way reality becomes bizarre when you look deeper. How long is a meter? Like, if you look at the end of the meter, then there are atoms and there are small, like tiny electrons around these atoms and you cannot determine the position of these electrons exactly. So if you look at the microscopic level, um, then it's tricky to define something. But we are talking about the macro things, the macro traits. And the Trump superhero is saying, we don't need to define it perfectly because if you put the microscope on the open source idea, you'll see that you cannot define it well at all. Actually, there are so many open source licenses out there, especially because the more you dig into them, the more weird things you will find out. For instance, is this open source app that allows you to communicate in an encrypted way with other people, is it truly open source since no one can see the encryption keys or encrypted messages? Like, I mean, if everything is open source, then you should also be able to see the encryption key. But of course, then it won't be um, encrypted anymore. Um, another example is the program Veracrypt, like the get-go program to encrypt files and folders on Linux. The application's developers say something like, our application's code is open source, anyone can use, share and edit it, but you are not allowed to sell it because they want it to be truly free. But the free and open source movement says that you must allow people to sell these open source pieces of software as well. So the only contradiction here is that the people from Veracrypt don't want their piece of software to put behind any paywall. In a sense, the Veracrypt license is more free and open source than what the free and open source software foundation is talking about. And when this community says you can do whatever you want with this piece of software because you are free, then are they okay with it being used for terrorist attacks? Some are and some are not. So you see, put the microscope on open source and you'll see a lot of misunderstandings, debates, conflicts and tons of licenses. But for our macroscopic world, open source is understood as code that is open and you can edit, share and use it. And that's what the important bit is. Like that's what also we need to concern ourselves when it comes to trade. We are caring about macro trades and not micro trades. Like if you go, <laughs> if you go to P and that relieves you and makes you feel emptily great, is that a trade because you pee to feel good? <laughs> I mean, of course not. That's some nonsense that no one should care about. If someone gives you a gift and you feel obliged to give back something else, then that's your problem. I mean, you are not forced to. And the person gave you that gift and he like doesn't give anything in return because else it's not a gift, right? And um, if you exchange shoes voluntarily, then that's sharing. It is easy to see where the macro trades really are. You want food, then work 8 hours per day, else you don't get food. You want clothes, security, etc. Again, work, work, work to follow our rules, else you get none of that. You want healthcare, give us your data, else you get none, and so forth. So these are the macro trades that we are talking about. And um, yeah, we are not talking about the micro trades. 
The Trump superhero is saying don't lose your focus. The open source movement's weak points are when they forget what the problem is, proprietary software. And so nowadays you will see many open source projects that are very much okay with accepting parts of their software to be proprietary. For example operating systems that proclaim to be open source yet they come pre-installed with all kinds of proprietary software make the open source movement weak and in time will transform it into something very different like Android has become. And this failure is on the rise in open source communities transforming them from caterpillars to butterflies and back to caterpillars again. This is why movements like FOSS, so free and open source software, have emerged and its mission is exactly fighting the enemy, proprietary software. And because their mission will always be to get rid of proprietary software, they cannot fail or mutate over time since the problem remains the same and it will be a problem and the kid is adding until the problem gets remediated. So that's why the Trump superhero's mission is to get rid of trade or the need for trade and anyone who has this mission in mind is working with him regardless if they are under a different umbrella like in a different organization or in a different project and if they don't know each other that doesn't matter the important thing is that you have the same enemy in mind and if 1000 research teams work to solve aging and three teams come up with a solution to fix aging then that's a victory for all the other teams and more likely the solution was built on the backs of the other team's research as well. If another superhero like the Trump superhero will come up with solutions to make trade obsolete, then this is as much a victory for that superhero as it is for the Trump superhero. Here is just explained that a common enemy unites people. Like if an asteroid for example is on the way of hitting planet Earth, then basically all tribes will work together to, I don't know, maybe stop the asteroid or shoot it or push it so that it misses planet Earth. Um, but yeah, you get the point, they will all work together. And in another scenario, if like an alien species will come to Earth to kill all of us, then we will also um, work together and fight them together. Like the Chinese and the Americans will work together, the KKK supporters and ISIS, Europeans and Russians, the Mafia and the Charlatans, Statopus and Privatopus will all be in this fight together to protect ourselves. And the Trump superhero says, if trade is our global threat understood and recognized by most people, then it will get remediated. So yeah, that was it for this video. I mean, it also just makes sense, right? I mean, if we would just stop all this <laughs> political fuckery, like this bullshit that's going on, like I'm left, I'm right, I'm Republican, I'm a Democrat, I'm this, I'm that. And these are just groups that divide us. But if we just like focus on this trade problem all together and fight it, then we might migrate into a saner society. And yeah, in the next video we are going to learn that societies are not invented, they evolve. So um, it's also going to be super interesting. I hope you found this video interesting. And I'm just going to say I look forward to the next video. As always, take care. Much love.